Um, but let's continue the, dis the discussion about the effect of the declining lira. The South um, African markets have been really taking a hit from this. Let's bring in Ali Khan Sachi, is a financial analyst and CEO of Rich Management, a financial and political advisory firm. He joins us via Skype from Nairobi. We appreciate your time so much. So why specifically is what's happening in Turkey specifically affecting uh, emerging markets in a way, in the way that it is? So, so, you know, the proximate cause to this emerging market weakness and con contagion has been Turkey. Um, but, you know, we've got to take a step back. What we're seeing is the reduction of dollars being supplied into the system, the end of quantitative easing, when the markets, the global markets were flooded with cheap and free dollars. Everybody got terribly excited, particularly across emerging and frontier markets. And we've seen a whiplash of a turn here. The dollar has been weaponized, whether it's deliberate or by design, it's not clear to me, but it's become a very, very powerful financial instrument, a coercive financial instrument in the hands of President Trump. And essentially, the reprice in Turkey has spilled over into other markets. As you said, the RAND fell more than 10% yesterday. That's an extraordinary eye-popping drop, unprecedented in the last uh, decade. And, and essentially, we're seeing this sort of um, uh, uh, spillover contagion effect hit the India rupee, hit uh, the South African RAND and other markets. And unfortunately, I think Erdogan is an extreme example of a policymaker who's totally deluded. He has no options left. Each time he speaks, essentially, this market is a sell, unless he puts up interest so, rates, wait, so because you, the only person... Do you think he's making it worse? He's making it much worse. I mean, it's just extraordinary. This is part of the problem. When people drink the Kool-Aid, they kind of believe that they can somehow you know, King Canute style, fight the markets. You can't fight the markets. Mrs. Thatcher said it in 1998. Many people have said it. And it, essentially, it's a losing battle. He's going to have to, he's going to have to raise interest rates by now. It, it might have been 500 basis points a week ago. He's going to have to raise it by 750 to bring the situation under control, I'm afraid. How much worse can it get? Could, could this become Venezuela? How much worse could it get? Look, I mean, we're looking at a precipice right now. I mean, I know we've had a precipitous drop of 40-something percent, which is just extraordinary. But if he refuses to raise interest rates, the only thing that can give is the Turkish lira. And people are now beginning to price in a Weimar Republic wheelbarrow-type scenario where the currency utterly collapses, inflation takes off, and Turks will be wandering around with wheelbarrows of lira trying to buy a loaf of bread. Um, I'm interested in something that you said, if I could go back. You said that the dollar is being um, weaponized. That's a really powerful word. Um, and, and you were clear to say that you didn't necessarily know what, what the intentions were. But now that it's very possible that a lot of this is related to the way the dollar has been um, treated, is it incumbent upon the U.S. to try to reverse some of this? I don't think that is, it. That is in line with President Trump's financial warfare strategies, which have proven so optimal. I think, you know, the whole thing about MAGA is bringing everyone down to size. And the dollar is basically kneecapping countries. And Erdogan is the first fellow to lose his kneecaps. There are going to be others if they, could, if they pursue the policy that Erdogan is seeking to to pursue. So let me be clear, Trump is wielding something much more powerful than a nuclear weapon now. He's reducing the supply of dollars into the financial market. Everybody has gotten careless. They're all over borrowed. They've been living high on cheap dollars. The, this is the end of cheap dollars. And it, it, the longer they take to address the situation, the worse the situation becomes. I suppose the one big thing uh, that is in our favor is this whole concept of populism, very popular leaders. They've stuck themselves on a pedestal. Now the cause and effect is very simple. Everyone can point at them, whether it's President Erdogan, whether it's Rouhani Khamenei, or whether it's uh, Maduro. They are all under, they're under a remote-controlled drone attack, just like Maduro was, except the drone is the U.S. dollar.
Okay, we will leave it um, at that. Um, Ali Khan Sachu, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it. Pleasure. Thank you.